I like click subscribe, do all that, you already know what time it is, it's Netflix time, this movie's called Concrete Cowboy. Sent to live with his estranged father for the summer, a rebellious teen finds kinship in a tight-knit Philadelphia community of cowboys. Black cowboys, it is. So this movie just came out, it's about an hour 51 minutes long. Spoiler alert, let's get to it. So here we have Cole, he getting suspended for school for fighting and whatnot. And there's his mom, she's had just about enough of this shit. So she tells Cole, you're gonna go live in Philly with your dad. When she gets there, he's not even home, but he'll be there in about five minutes. She drops his clothes off and tells him to wait there. I'm like, damn, mom, you just gonna leave him on the Philly streets? Yep, that's what happened. You could at least let him sit in the car for five minutes. Mom was like, fuck that shit. Well, anyway, this lady named Nessie sees him and she knows exactly who he is. He hasn't been around in a while, so clearly he don't remember anybody. She says your father's around the corner if you don't feel like waiting. So he walks around the corner. Pop's chilling with the old niggas, it's Edges Alba. He's like, all right, let's get you in the house. They get to his house, he actually has a horse inside the house, which scares the hell out of Cole at first. He tells him if he steps out, that door stays locked until the morning. He's like, don't worry, I'll be out by the morning. Pop's like, all right, whatever. Tries to find something to eat, ain't nothing in there but sodas and beer. Cole's like, fuck it, I'ma just get some sleep. Next morning, he checks out the neighborhood before he rolls out. Then he's just chilling by the corner store. Asking people, can he use a phone so he can call his mom? No luck with that shit. Then his boy Smush rolls up, who he ain't seen in like 10 years. They end up riding together. Smush gotta make a stop real quick. About to hit up the bodega. Got him some food while he was in there, and Cole was like, hey, well, what's up with that? Smush is like, yeah, it was a business opportunity. But we know what you be doing in these streets. So he gets back home around the way. Pops comes out like, Cole, you gotta go. As long as you hang around with Smush, you can't be around here. He said, you stop hanging around Smush, you can come back. But the Cole don't feel like he's coming back to nothing, so he just takes his bags and rolls out. He thought he could stay with Smush baby mama Trina, but she just kicked Smush out, so it's like, nah. Then he tries to stay with Nessie. She's like, nah, I can't take you in either, dog. So he sneaks into some building. Turns out it ends up being a stable. For horses and all that. It ends up being Nessie's stable. I don't know if it's ironically or not, but he was in the stable with the most dangerous horse that they have, but the horse was actually chilling with him. She was like, that horse boo don't take kindly to nobody. Like, for real, for real, you should have got your head bashed in all the strength. But apparently it took a liking to him. So basically, with nowhere else to go, he tells his pops he stopped fucking with Smush, and now he's back in the house. But obviously he was lying. He's just like, like, yo, we gotta keep this shit on the low. Smush ends up getting him a pair of Jordans and shit. The next day, he's ready to work in the stables. Now, question one. Why would you wear these shoes if you're about to do cleaning and work and shit? Question two, why would you even bring them out? N niggas know you ain't been working, and you know your father gonna suspect some shit. Like, come on, where you get them shoes from? Come on, man, you supposed to know better than that. You from Detroit. The fuck? Well, anyway, his first task is to clean up all the horse shit, and he scoops it one shovel at a time to take to the dumpster. Nigga, you gotta clean a bunch of stables. You'll be all day doing this shit. Get the fucking wheelbarrow that's right next to the dumpster. You wear clean shoes to do work, and you're not working h smart. You're working hard. It's just dumb. Homegirl had to school him and shit. Then my nigga in the wheelchair had to teach him, you know what I'm saying, teach him the ways. So as he's shuffling, he's talking about a horse that he named after his brother, who got killed in the accident, but he ain't explained how yet. Then you got them all sitting by the campfire telling origins about cowboy stories. They said he used to be called cow hands before they would call them cowboys. They talked about how it was black cowboys before it was white cowboys. Talked about how the white man put the psychology in their head about controlling horses. Kind of like how they controlled slaves. They don't really come out and say that, but that's pretty much what they're advertising. Here comes the old method man, old Clifford. Used to be a cowboy, now he's a cop. He's trying to help him out, but the city's complaining about the smell of a dead horse or something like that that they haven't got rid of. Now, I'm not sure if that's a metaphor for something, because we never see a dead horse throughout the movie, so... Bottom line, the city's trying to do construction over their property, and I don't think they've paid their full permits on the stables, in, uh, at least in a while. So that's their situation in a nutshell. Well, anyway, Cole goes back to the house and chill for a minute. Not exactly sure how he made time to get with Smush, but nevertheless, there he is. They go to this party, they meet this guy, some sort of kingpin, I guess, saying he hearing worry about some of the young boy, one of the young boys coming up on his corners trying to make a come up, whatever like that. Of course, Smush tell him he ain't hear a shit. Cole probably thinking to himself, Smush shouldn't have spent that extra money on me, especially when this nigga comes up to him like, hey, yo, you got some fresh ass J's. He like, all right, man, y'all go enjoy the party. We all know in the back of our minds, he think it's Smush scamming off the top. And that's the one rule you don't break at that street game. Next day, back to cleaning horses. And then my man breaks down the situation, what happened between him and his brother. His brother was making a drop. They got shot at. He ended up getting hit in his back of his spine. But his brother didn't wake up. And they left him paralyzed and his brother died. Yeah, man, that's messed up. Later on, he back with Smush. Cole getting paranoid. He's like, come on, man. That nigga know it was good, yo. Smush like, yo, don't even worry about all this shit. Cole like, you know I got you, yo. Just watch your back out here, man. Smush said he got some big plans, but we don't know exactly what it is yet. Back at the spot, Pops gets my man to actually try to ride a horse again. They set it up for him so he could ride out. Cole feeling some type of way about the whole situation. His father meets him back at the house. Cole's about to dip, but he feels like his father hates him. Dad plays an old school song on a record player, and he tells him the story about how Cole got his name. He doesn't want him hanging around Smush because he used to be just like him. Talks about how he was a piece of shit too, and how his real name is Coltrin. 
which was based off a saxophone player named John Coltrane, who did everything without a father too, which was ironically the song he was playing in the background. Later on, he sneaks out to see Mush again, and Cole's tripping off him because he's bringing in too much money, yo. He's got way too much. And so he takes him to the house, or his house. He's finally going to show him his plan. He didn't know Smush used to be a cowboy too. His plan is to get enough money to get out of there, get some stables, and flip them shits. Not very idealistic, but if he's smart enough, I guess he can make it work. But the way that you're living and doing what you're doing tells me that you're not smart enough. Later on, Cole heads back over to the stables, and they find out that Boo got loose on the baseball field. Like I said before, this is the wildest horse they have. But because he's been spending time with it, they need Cole to tame him. After getting thrown off, though, he finally got him under control. Later on, Cole and Tia talking. You can tell they got some type of interest in each other. I don't know if it's that deep, but they vibing a little bit. And then she makes him official cowboy. He got a hat and everything. And they have a little cookout later on. I guess you can call it a good old-fashioned hoot nanny. Anyway, Daz and his right-hand man start racing. You already knew Eldridge Elba was winning. Man's like, come on, yo, two out of three, yo, what's good? After that, Cole rides with Smush to this random spot. Looking at how it is, you can tell some shit about to jump off. And it does. You knew they was going to catch on to Mush, man. They about to get Mush done. He tells Cole, don't go nowhere. He's about to get deaded in the trunk. Luckily for him, the boys roll past. And we got the chase. Man, if you ain't catching no kids, you out of shape, my guy. I don't think he really wanted to catch him anyway, though. They in a tunnel somewhere. Smush talking to Cole, talking about, yeah, we got to go to war with these niggas. I know Cole looking at him like, the fuck is you talking about? There's only two of us. I'm like, Mush, are you stupid? You know he probably got a gang of niggas. He keeps asking him, is he with him or not? He's like, yo, this horse stuff ain't going to last forever. Da, 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 da. Considering he used to work with your dad, he has his reasons for what he's saying, but... But then Cole just walks away from him. And I'm thinking to myself, like, nigga, you could have been dead. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know you feel like you don't have any other options, but... To continue on going down this route is just stupid. He goes back to his horse and you could tell he's basically praying for smush. Goes to the court, starts playing basketball with T. You know what I'm saying? She tells him she's going to block him even when she on a horse. He's like, all right, I hear you talking that bullshit. So he asks her, is he going to teach him how to stand on a horse? Like when Mush used to ride, he used to stand on his horse. Then Met the Man rolls up on him like, nigga, get in the car. He takes him to a racetrack and talks about this guy that owns racetracks and starts talking about his childhood and stuff. Tells Cole, look, man, you don't have to move out the hood to grow up. You know what I'm saying? Message, nigga. Anyway, Cole gets back to T, and she lets him know what it is, and he's practicing how to stand on the horse. I'm feeling the colors of the clouds in the background. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of lit. The next day, inspectors come through with animal control, and they start taking the horses. Meph's like, look, man, we ain't got a choice. Plus, you got to uh, make room for stuff. They're trying to build shit over here. He is bullshit, but at this point, they can't really do much about it. Obviously, Cole feels some type of way. So what does he do when he's feeling hopeless? Reese right back, uh, right back up with Mush. They go for a ride, and Mush tells Cole to be a lookout. So he chills at the corner, and I'm thinking to myself, why would you pull up at this spot? This is one of your usuals. It's the same, matter of fact, it's the same fucking spot. Like niggas ain't already clocking you from this spot. I swear, Smush is so fucking ridiculous, yo. And lucky for Cole, he wasn't in the car. Because some dude pulled up on the bike and bust off on Smush. Yeah, man, he got deaded. Come on, man, you know he had niggas. Like, why would you pull up at the same fucking bodega? It's... Swear, yo. Well, anyway, Meth gives Cole's dad the news. I guess some time went past. They had the funeral. Dad finds Cole sleeping in the barn and gets them all cleaned up and whatnot. Then they go on a mission to take their horses back. Now, did they not think police didn't have any security cameras? I mean, like, come on. Didn't matter. He was too busy playing video games on his phone anyway, so. But Meth was on point. He was like, man, I've been waiting out here for three days waiting for y'all dumbasses to drop the courage to do something. But he lets them out and give them a five, you know, minute head start. Because apparently animals are at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to police work. Afterwards, him and his boy get a smoke on. They ride out the next day with Smush's horse. Yeah, that's the horse that uh, Cole's dad's been keeping at his house. And they place his boots on his grave. Then we see a bus go by, and they're watching cowboys ride out. They all watch the construction being done in their street. Even Meth is watching. Later on, got horses back around the way. Then Cole's mom shows back up. Cole and mom embrace each other and all that. Talking about how he's a real cowboy now. And that's it. So fun facts for you. The city of Philadelphia is currently developing on Flet Fletcher Street land. And like the generations of cowboys before them, they ride out in search of a permanent stable to preserve their heritage. This movie was actually dedicated to a guy by the name of Eric E. Miller who worked in horses in Philadelphia. He was tragically killed two years ago. He was only 46 years old. The only thing I know is that he had a horseback riding program for younger children. Concrete Cowboy on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, subscribe, do all that. You already know what time it is, Mr. Skizzy, ha, 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 ha